I've thought about filming this for quite some time and who knows if it'll work out as well as I intend, but these mega flagstones are going to be bridge stones to get us over the dry creeks at this native slash rain garden project that we're doing in Dundas. And you can do amazing things with some rolling logs and a lever. So I'm just gonna try and to be honest, just be slow and methodical about things. Um, it's not always gonna do what you want, but if I just, almost like I was rowing, if I just keep turning this like that, I'm putting very, very little effort into moving this right now. Our long-term intent here is to get this shifted sideways and then we can move should be feasible. be necessary to put this guy back in the center here. A lot of people use heavy machinery to do things like this and more power to them. I'm not saying good or bad to anyone, but if you can do it this way, then, then you can avoid the compaction of tree roots, you can avoid the carbon footprint that goes with them. Um, slow and steady, think it through. Um, you also avoid. The, you also avoid the time that it takes to load up the machinery. So what I did there is I just put that little rock underneath to lift this up a little tiny bit. You may also notice that I'm going to great lengths not to reach under this. The last thing I want to do is crush a finger. This is sort of a one of those Zen jobs. Just a little bit at a time. Gets you where you want to go. Now, I could do this with help. Um, but frankly, my helper is busy behind the camera. Um, let me just go back. Okay. So 
and step on the plants. Have you noticed I've gotten quiet for once? I don't get quiet very often. I'm quiet because I'm thinking. Now, this is where things start getting interesting. So, one of the things that I want to do is point this where I want it to go. Something really interesting, and I do not understand the physics of this, is that if one of these rolling logs is on an angle, as it goes across it, the stone will turn. And so that's one of the ways that we turn these stones. We're going to take this eventually all the way around the house via the sidewalk. Um, and the way that we help it make turns is by there we go, wait. Um, is by putting the logs in on an angle so that it, it follows that turn. Not bad. Hardyman wants to say that we'll edit this to make it go a little faster, but at the same time, it's probably important that people see how slow and methodical you need to be. <laughs> I really thought we were going to crush that off. Okay. Hmm. I'm just going to put this under here, not because it's the right size. By the way, for these guys, all I did was get fence posts and cut them in half.
see how it's turning and I don't want it turning actually in this case. So these logs not only serve as wheels but they also serve as fulcrums. Oddly enough, I had a friend do a graph once of how much stone you're lifting. If I start lifting this, I'm lifting almost 100, well, 50% of the stone. But as soon as I start lifting it, the ratio of what I'm lifting to what the ground is holding up uh, starts dropping. So as soon as I get it up a little bit, it becomes easier and easier to move it. And the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing now is so that I can straighten this log. Again, being careful not to get my fingers underneath it. Now my goal here, really, is just to get it off the pathway. So now I can just use my favorite tool in the physics handbook. And I'm really not using that much effort, as you can tell by my voice. I'm not a lot of breath. So this guy's moved. Now, when we need to move it the rest of the way, I would center it on those stones and I can drive it up and around where I need it to go. So now I gotta do the other one. But that's the simple version of how we move big stones like this without big equipment. 